the host of the WGN Political Report, Paul Lisnick. Hi, happy guys. Friday. Hi. Uh, good to see you. Happy birthday. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we know Lightfoot's background, obviously, but I'm curious about your take on her appointment to this position. Uh, how did it come to be and what do you expect will be the result and reaction? Well, it, listen, I don't know how it came to be um, and we don't know that she's accepting it. It almost looks like, look, it brings a lot of attention to the situation. I hesitate to use the word kind of political stunt here, but mm -hmm. when you put that kind of focus on the former mayor, asked to investigate a current mayor, right? You can get the parallels to some of this, um, but former Mayor Lightfoot has enough on her plate, so uh, it, why she would do it, you know, I'm not exactly quite sure, um, but it certainly makes this a high profile investigation. Look, WGN has put a lot of attention on that whole situation, and the bringing Mayor Lightfoot in when there's a lot of other people who could be doing it was a bit of, I think, a a lot of people surprised. Let's see what she says. Let's see if she takes it on, and then we'll see it how, it's, how it unfolds. She's got the credentials for it. She is the former right. prosecutor. She was a mayor. She knows how things should be done. Do you think uh, she won't do it? Well, I mean, she, she's got another position. She's got, you know, thing, yeah. I don't, I, you know, and, and I, look, I think she's very sensitive as well to the spotlight. In other words, she knows this is going to put a light on her. Yeah. Is it something she wants right now? Maybe. I can't imagine why she would. We'll see. All right, let's talk about mayors. Speaking, keeping going yeah. with that, the mayor who took over for Mayor Lori Lightfoot, Brandon Johnson, one year anniversary already, can you believe it? Yeah. And then he's made some changes. What are some of his accomplishments that he's been talking about? So, you know, he's been doing a couple of interviews, not a lot. He talked to Block Club and a few others, and basically he said, Name one promise I haven't kept. Um, and he also, in, in referring to the migrant crisis, made a comment that said, um, I'm not asking for high five. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. and you're probably not going to get many. Uh, but here's the point. You know, it, to his credit, Mayor Johnson has tried to accomplish those things he set out to do. More money for uh, mental health centers um, and jobs for young people. He is attempting to do what he wants. But, of course, that Bring Chicago Home referendum. Didn't work. That didn't work. And that went down arguably in flames. And what he's got to wrestle with is, was that a comment uh, about him and his agenda? Or was it just the people of Chicago saying, look, we respect your agenda, but we don't want to pay more in taxes right mm -hmm. now? Do you see anything new changing now that he has put a new um, chief of staff in there? Christina Passione Zayas, yeah. who was the deputy chief of staff. Now the guy that says, uh, has retired. And before that, of course, in the state, in the state right, house, yes, right? So she she's was, got yeah. legislative experience. So look, you know, the, the guy that says retirement, uh, you know, did it, is it, was it planned? We're not probably never going to know that. He had already retired once. He came into this administration. He retires at the one year anniversary. Certainly explains things and, and looks fine. Um, or was there something more to, leading to that? We may never know unless he one day talks. But, you know, with, with Christina's his replacement, look, she understands the government. She knows um, how this mayor works. And in many ways, she's been getting groomed for this position in the last year. So I think Mayor Johnson ought to have some faith in what she can do. She knows she, she can capture votes herself in running for election. She understands how the process works. She's a good choice for this. Okay. And let's see how it unfolds. One of his allies at City Council, uh, okay. Alderman Byron Sigjo Lopez, yeah. Almost, but did not get punished for his participation in a pro-Palestinian rally where an American flag was burned. Uh, is, is this the end of this for him? So it probably is the end of this event. We talked about this last week on Political Report with Alderman Nick Spasato. Um, basically, you know, Sigcho Lopez's comment was, I didn't know the flag was there. And by the way, a veteran is the, per is the one who burned it. Um, and Spasato said on my show, he finds it hard to believe that he didn't see the signs that were going after President Biden. And, and you know, Spasato's no liberal. Um, but it was about honoring the presidency. So the bottom line was, uh, you know, his colleagues cut him a break. Um, and, and he did talk to uh, Sigcho Lopez, talk to Talia Farrow, one of the other aldermen to kind of make amends. So I think the bottom line is free speech won out. Brandon Johnson stood behind him. Uh, and even Pritzker sort of got, the free speech was dominant here. But the bottom line will be if uh, Lopez, Sigcho Lopez's constituents weren't happy with what he did, well, they'll have an opportunity mm -hmm. to vote him out in another three years. Right. That's the way it works. It took 10 days, I think, before they uh, declared Eileen O'Neill Burke the winner of the yes. Cook County State's Attorney race, yeah. beating out Clayton Harris. <clears throat> this is a changing of the guard, isn't this? I don't know. And he, mm. I would have said yes to that question oh, until he, like yesterday. But, oh, really? Because of what she's been saying. So when you looked at her ad, she's in the robe. She's got her judge's gavel. And everything about her said, I'm going to be tough on crime. And right. she has said she's going to lower the retail theft limit from the the, the uh, $1,000 that Kim Fox brought it up to back to what the law says, which is 300 She sounds tough on crime. But in an interview that she did just the other day, she basically said, these are my words, but basically said, don't pin me with this tough on crime mm. uh, image.
image and reputation. And of course, Tony Preckwinkle immediately came out with a welcome congratulations. So there's there's been some kind of talking going Meetings, on between yeah, people. Yeah. So your question's a really good one. And I have a different answer today than I might have a couple of days ago. But look, she's going to be up against Bob Fioretti. And Republicans have a tough time in this city anyway. But he's putting him out. He's going to put himself out there as the tough on crime guy. So how she's going to back away from being tough on crime, I'm not quite sure, but she's got to deal with the balance. It was the suburbs that supported her strongly. That's where the tough on crime message works. If she wants to pull it to the city, she's got to find a way to balance that a little bit. But, you know, once again, that's just a, that's a tough road to walk. From being tough on crime to being in a tough spot, President Biden has been pressuring uh, Benjamin Netanyahu uh, to, to get more careful when it comes to protecting uh, the cas the, against casualties yeah. um, in Gaza. Um, what do you, his spot is getting trickier by the day. You know, Ray, it's, it, and he, it's, it's getting, I mean, he's, he's angry. Um, we're getting reports. He had a conversation with Netanyahu on the phone yesterday, which uh, the reports are that he was really quite um, forceful. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if nasty is the word, but he was really, uh, really quite direct with Netanyahu and basically making demands. If you want our support, you got to do something. Look, Biden's got a tough road. Speaking of people with tough roads to walk, yeah. he's got a tough one, too, because he understands the pulse of America right now, which is people are not with him um, on supplying uh, arms to Israel. And yet he's, we have a strong relationship with Israel. He's got to find a way to walk that line. But I think he's going to be pushed in a position of withholding some of that, uh, some of that support because things have got to change in the way it's being handled. Watch on your show. Someday. Hey, come Coming up this weekend, Greg Pratt. You know, Greg Pratt from the mm -hmm. Tribune, yes. he just wrote a book about Mayor Lightfoot, Lightfoot right? in that term. We're going to talk all about that book. He was like a fly on the wall. The stories are really fascinating. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about that. Um, so he's a good part of the show. And then uh, on the Midday Show next Tuesday, I'm going to be talking to reporter Isaac Arnsdorf, or Arnsdorf, who wrote a book about the MAGA movement, but it's not about Trump. It's about individuals who got caught up in it, and he kind of follows them. It's really fascinating. That'll be Tuesday at 1145.